bubble, everything I be right. Put me on brown, she waste me up for your Chloe, Chloe, she's... Ever caught yourself daydreaming about the fate of those dazzling video vixens and sultry singers who once ruled our screens with their hypnotic moves and killer vibes? Well, get ready. It's time for a juicy dive into the Where Are They Now saga. Who swapped their high heels for the high life of a CEO? Who's still slaying in the music biz? And who gracefully ghosted the spotlight? Get ready for a cheeky filled snapshot that'll have you gasping, giggling, and gossiping all in one breath. Yo, I got a resolution. This year I'm playing right. Karen Steffens, our fearless author and name dropper extraordinaire, found herself wading through a sea of controversy. Facing the music on Tyra Banks' couch, she was grilled like a summer barbecue. Well, initially when I started writing the book, it was for my own purpose. I had gone through a lot because the book isn't about sex and it's not about hip hop and it's not about rappers. It's about my journey from being an abused child, to being raped as a young child, being, a, you know, going through spousal abuse, a young mother, and then having to, you know, almost dying with a drug overdose. I really had to figure out what happened to me in order for me to heal. I had to admit it to myself, what I did. Curious about how Corinne strutted into the hip hop scene? Thank a certain Cool G and his golden industry key. After landing in L.A., she was quickly scooped up by Cool G's crew, diving headfirst into the glitz, glamour, and yes, the grit of music video life. Her breakout? Strutting her stuff in Jay-Z's Hey Poppy video in 2000. I was the worst. I used to switch chicks every day. Catapulting her to it girl status in roles with legends like R. Kelly and LL Cool J. Flash forward to 2006, and there's Corinne, dazzling Oprah and the world, chatting up a storm about women's portrayal in media. It was released internationally, but in the U.S., Oprah was the pinnacle. I remember Geraldo calling after Oprah and having to turn Geraldo down because it was like, we just did Oprah. You should have called us like two weeks ago. Now, trading video vixen vibes for the writer's life, she's penned her way to a new chapter. But what about her fellow vixens of the vibrant 2000s? Let's chat about Lanisha Cole, shall we? You might recall seeing her stunning presence in early 2000 hits like Pharrell's Frontin' so then we tried. and Mr. Cow's Danger Been So Long, right? Well, she didn't just stop there. Lanisha's been on the move, even landing a gig on The Price is Right back in 2003. With oil air freshener with reduced air lets, the scent is all you notice. But things turned sour when she ended up in a lawsuit over a dressing room incident. She's hit them with not one, not two, but seven whopping complaints. Among the heavy hitters are allegations of sexual harassment and, get this, false imprisonment, all aimed at two of the big shot producers behind the scenes. Despite the drama, Lanisha pushed forward and now runs her own photography business, even appearing as an expert on sci-fi's fact or faked paranormal files. Plus, she's working on a documentary about her dad, Rudy Cole, a talented painter. And let's not forget that she welcomed her daughter Onyx in 2022 with none other than Nick Cannon himself. But that's not to say she doesn't get caught up in controversy every once in a while. Next on the list is a woman who has no shortage of enemies. Hailing from the city of brotherly love, Sunday Carter's got quite the resume. After graduating from Temple University with a theater and film degree, Sunday didn't waste any time making her mark in the entertainment world. You might have caught her in movies like State Property and Soul Plane. Seriously, it feels like every video vixen had a cameo in that flick, right? Plus, she made memorable appearances on TV hits like The Jamie Foxx Show and The Bernie Mac Show. The girl was basically everywhere, but her momentum didn't stop there. Nope, Sunday decided to spice things up by diving into the music video scene. From Nelly and Kelly Rowland's Dilemma to Twista's Slow Jams, she brought her A-game to the screen. As of today, she is still killing it managing to juggle Hollywood and parenting like a pro. And speaking of Hollywood, she later joined the cast of Basketball Wives LA. And let's just say, things got a little rough. Apparently, Malaysia Pargo left Sunday with the biggest black eye ever. 
Ouch, indeed. So where did you get the black eye from? From Malaysia. Leading a slightly less troublesome life is Simone Baptiste. It's real strong, real fat, and real long. Doggies in the building holding something. They so check this out. This Trinidad wasn't just your average video vixen and model. She snagged herself a bachelor's degree in child psychology from the University of Illinois at Chicago. While juggling motherhood and career, she worked as a substitute teacher. But here's where it gets interesting. She decided to try her luck at Nelly's model search in 2003 and ended up taking home the top spot. From there, her career took off at warp speed. She started popping up in Apple Bottom ads and gracing the pages of King magazines. And let's not forget her cameos in music videos like Snoop Dogg's That's That. The real ladies like us. And the iconic Bobby Valentino's Slow Down. The pretty round thing was good to me. After a brief stint on the music video scene, she delved back into her work and went on to snag a master's degree in mental health counseling. Now that's leveling up. Her daughter's following in her footsteps, too. She's now a realtor with her own YouTube channel. Like mother, like daughter. Unlike Simone, however, Gloria Velez did not shy away from the glamour. You might remember her from Jay-Z's Big Pimpin' video, strutting alongside Pimp C. By that point in her career, she was the woman to have in your music video and appeared alongside Cisco in his thong song and Jagged Edges Where the Party At. Barely out of her teens and already the Puerto Rican powerhouse was setting the music video world ablaze. And not just with her moves. Scandal? Gloria practically wore it as a badge of honor, stirring up the scene with her every step. And oh, the whispers about her and R&B bad boy Aaron Hall when she was just 16. Let's just say age was more than just a number for those two. Drew Hill's very first single, Tell Me. One version is from Aaron Hall. I was actually in the studio when he recorded that. You we are, just started dating. You are Lie. Swear to God, I was 16. The rumor mill didn't stop at Aaron. It buzzed with juicy tidbits about her and a parade of rappers, suggesting Gloria was playing the game to snag those coveted video spots. And who could forget her sizzling stint as Playboy's Babe of the Month in 2005 or that cheeky nod on The Chappelle Show? Talk about diversifying your portfolio. Gloria even dabbled in dropping bars and signed up with Rodney Jerkins' label, hoping to hit it big in rap. Spoiler alert, it wasn't her mic drop moment. Moment. After the fanfare faded and life took a tender turn with the birth of her second son, who needed extra care, Gloria waved goodbye to the limelight. Now she's all about the quiet life, running an online boutique for women. From video vixen to boutique boss lady, Gloria's story is anything but dull. A pig in a blanket, a smoke in a pancake. Esther Baxter is another vixen who shared Gloria Velez's success, minus the scandal. Her stunning appearance appearance in Petey Pablo's Freak a League video back in 2004 was just the beginning of her reign. Esther graced the screens of over 25 hit music videos from Ludacris's Georgia to Twista's Overnight Celebrity. She was practically the queen of the music video scene. And, the lights you take the back. and then there's her magazine spreads. The Source, Smooth, Vibe, King, XXL, you name it, she was there, looking fierce as ever. Her star shone even brighter when she snagged the Video Goddess Award at the Vibe Awards for her killer performance in Ludacris's number one spot video. Video. Father, father, and hey, I love you. Just when you thought she was riding the highest wave of her career, she took a back seat on the music front in 2007 because she needed to be a mother to her newborn son. She shifted gears, diving into college and pursuing her passion for acting. Esther made waves on both the big and small screens, scoring roles in comedies like Meet the Browns and Real Husbands of Hollywood, as well as the film Speed Dating. She's also the brains behind Belange, her very own own lingerie line. There is simply nothing this woman hasn't done. Esther Baxter proves once again that she's a force to be reckoned with, whether on screen or off. Next up, we've got Jessica Cartwright, or as she's known in the biz, Jessica Cartwright is a model from Miami, Florida, and was one of the few brown or dark-skinned women who got a lot of camera time. At 15, she appeared in Ja Rule and Ashanti's Always On Time video. Yes, I said 15. 
From then on, she did everything from making appearances in videos like 50 Cent's Candy Shop. Little Flip Sunshine. I do nothing but spoil you. And David Banner's play. To appearing in movies such as 2005's Bloodline. But she's not just about the glitz and glam. Jessica shares snippets of her life and some uplifting messages on social media. Before diving into real estate, she spent some time as an image consultant with a company called Chess. From a fashion icon to a realtor. Now that's quite a transition. But as a woman in her 40s, she could do without the drama. But that is definitely not the case for Buffy Carew, a.k.a. Buffy the Body. Just want a quickie with a rap star, ladies tell the truth, you know I'm cute. When Buffy the Body came out, it started this whole thing with you had to have a big butt. She made waves as a video vixen, but her journey took an unexpected turn when some swimsuit pics of her went viral without her say-so. Instead of letting it define her, Buffy used her platform to campaign body positivity. So to say that this woman knew her way around media would be an understatement. I feel great on the inside. When I walk out the gym, there's never been a time I've walked out the gym and didn't feel better about myself. You know, there's never, ever, ever been a time that I can go in a gym, come out, and not feel better. You know, just feel good, like I've done something positive. The OG queen of hip-hop video vixens appeared on the scene in the mid-2000s, stealing hearts with her killer curves. I mean, she was everywhere, and people couldn't get enough of her. But then, around 2006, she kind of dipped out of the spotlight, leaving everyone wondering what happened. Rumors started swirling about beef with other vixens like Melissa Ford and run-ins with folks like Charlemagne the God, but details were murky at best. One time, Buffy clashed with Melissa Ford during a photo shoot for King Magazine. Buffy claimed things got tense real quick and the vibe stayed icy for years after. And I'm not going to say I had beef with her. She had beef with me, was mm -hmm. Melissa Ford. It was um, when we did the fifth anniversary issue for King Magazine, when yeah. all of us was on the cover, yeah. it was like five covers. Yeah. When I got to L.A. to do the shoot, yeah. she didn't know that I was the fifth girl. So when I got there, her whole attitude changed. She never spoke to me. She was walking around the shoot slamming doors oh, and wow. just acting real ugly. So when all of us sat on the sofa for the group shot, she Can got you know? up. It was like a long song. Oh, okay. It was I'll like extended, three yeah. girls. It was one girl laying on the back. Okay. It was once. And she That's got it. up and left because she didn't want me in the shoot. She just, I've never done, that was my first time ever meeting her. Yeah. Never done anything to her. Never said anything back. She was one of the video girls I looked up to when I got in. Then there was the showdown with Charlemagne during an interview, where he questioned her success beyond just her looks, sparking a pretty heated back and forth. You know, Baby, you're, you're, see, you, you know, got to keep it rolling. For how you long, got to though? Keep it Eventually, forever. age is going to catch Forever. up. Things are going to start to sag. sag. What, what they got to do with the money rolling in, though? Okay, Cause that's what you're getting paid for right now. Okay, you want to know what else are you doing? So what else are you doing? You will see. Buffy, what, else, what else would you like to do in the industry? I want to know. No, you're going to see. Just like you see me in the magazine, you'll see what's... You will hear about it. Trust me. I hope it's something productive. Y'all, the, the world cares about that. Buffy, don't. So what do you consider yourself? You consider yourself a... a very um, nice person. A video model. Yep. Video chick. Yep. Or a video hoe. A video girl. But despite the drama, Buffy didn't let it slow her down. She branched out into acting and fitnesses and even started her businesses. She turned her fame into DVDs, eBooks, and her very own fitness website, Bodynamics.com, which later evolved into a clothing line. So who is Buffy the Body? Not your average video vixen, for sure.